Yoski, been some time since I've done a video. I think it's been half a dozen projects in the meantime. And in terms of sewing, uh, this is the first version of a thing which uh, I've tested, it doesn't work well enough. I'm currently on a second version which also doesn't work well enough. But with every prototype, I get more questions. So, you know, but this video is not about this. So let's get this out of the way. It's about the pouches. If you've seen my previous and I believe first video on sewing, uh, yeah, time has passed and I've made more of those. I've made uh, three of these big ones and also made two smaller ones. Well, three smaller ones, yeah. So why are you just seeing a pair of each here and not all of them? Well, because unlike you and me, these pouches are doing their job right now. Yes, they are working. So very, very useful stuff. And yeah, uh, the larger ones for this bigger power bank and those smaller ones for the smaller one, obviously. We have again the same design principles. You are always able to see the charge indicator. And yeah, great utility. Now, in this video, I mean, there's not much to say. These are just custom pouches. So what I was thinking is while I was doing um, the other pouches, uh, I think it was a long session about a month ago, like last month uh, during some holiday break or another. I've actually gathered, I think, four hours of raw footage. So I have this idea to maybe make a minute or two montage out of that, just, you know, to uh, try editing more because I'm not really that good at it. Not enough practice. So. Yeah, but before we get to the montage, which uh, I still have to do, I just wanted to tell you, and like in general, because I haven't uh, actually video covered all of these steps, and when I started thinking about it, there are a lot more steps than I was like, just, you know, like initial impression. So the first step is you actually have to measure, you know, I almost forgot about it because I've done it a long time ago. You have to measure the stuff you want to make a thing for, which sometimes is not trivial. These are mostly, you know, like cubic like stuff. So that's easy. Then once you have your measurement, and this is the most important point, you actually have to think and sometimes think quite a lot about the design in your head and the feasibility, you know, like the order of operations, especially for sewing, it's extremely important. So yeah, a lot of thinking, the second step. Third step is that I think usually you would do a design. I mean, a pattern, a blueprint, a template. So what I usually do is I made them directly out of cardboard, but I'm actually moving with this new project to just doing them like uh, on the computer in Inkscape, you know, whatever drawing program that you like, probably a vector one will be better or, you know, a proper CAD program. Uh, there's a QCAD that I really like, which I think it's free for personal use. But anyways, once you get the design actually you know, like laid out, what you would do, you would do, at least what I do, is I do a rough cut of the fabric because, you know, there's a rough cut and then there's the precise cut. I found it, at least in my case, with so little space, it's practically impossible to do a final precise cut out of a large sheet of uh, fabric, which I'm, and by large, I mean, it's like meters by a meter and a half or two meters. I'm, I don't have that much space. So I do it in two steps, first the rough cut. And this is where the template, if you have it in physical form, is already useful because you can just plop it and, you know, like with some margins, just cut it roughly. That makes it really nice. Then after the, which will be probably like fourth step, I will put them on screen anyways. Uh, after you have the precise cut, what I do, and I would assume that professional people don't do it, I actually draw my design like where I need to uh, bend stuff. Well, do you bend it? I mean, just, you know, like flip it around. Where do I need to sew it? And usually also what kind of a stitch I want in the place. So that helps me. Now, in case of this project, obviously, the straps, they, they don't come like this. You have to actually make them so out of a, a pretty long a coil of this uh, strap you need to cut it to size make a hole which is its own uh, thing and then uh, add the eyelet so this is an additional step and only once you have all the pieces is the actual sewing so you know again like 
like with electronics projects, it's the last physical step in a very long process. And from the point of view of the totality of going from a need or an idea in your head to a finished product, that's like trivial. It's like you can outsource it to someone who actually, you know, has practice and knows what they're doing. And most of the stuff is in the, in the second phase, the design phase, as usual, which is, you know, the fun part of it. Anyways, I hope I covered everything here at least enough. We're at five minutes, uh, almost well, five and a half. We'll see how the montage will go. In any case, I think. Got it right. This is actually the volume. We've got a car over here, and we've got two semis, and line. It actually started to veer way off direction. Luckily, it rolled to a stop behind me here in this field of grass. But uh, man, the sound the cable was making. Buster's crash test buddies take their hot seats. Can we put our seatbelt on. Three items. I think I need it. Number two. Agent Doctor Mahara to the white courtesy telephone. Okay, you ready? Okay, hit me. You guys need to pick up. Then, Thanks for watching. Bye.